to our service. It's great to see everyone. Good morning and welcome to our service of this word on this beautiful sunny winter's day. As we look out of the window here in Holystone, we see the hoarfrost sparkling in the sunshine. Very beautiful. But we're here today to worship God, to give him praise, to hear his word, to confess our sins and to make our requests. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our first hymn is At the Name of Jesus. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth your saving power among all people. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, 
and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. and now we sing the Gloria Now here is John's story with our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. After his return from the defeat of Chur de Leoma and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaba, that is the king's valley. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram, by God most high, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him one tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 128. Happy is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labour of your hands. You shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, is now, now and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We sing now glorious things of thee are spoken.
And now Margie will read for us the gospel. Our gospel is taken from the book of John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish, Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests, guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Had I been uh, logged in before the service, I would have let John know that it was Jill who was going to read and not Margie. So he hasn't lost his mind and Margie hasn't changed her voice. Uh, but that was my mistake. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, in his farewell statement, which was released on Tuesday, said something that I agree with. Now, before you start emailing me, I wasn't expecting uh, to say that. However, America, as it begins a new chapter in its life, is facing quite a challenge. And on Thursday morning, uh, the British press reflected some of that challenge with their headlines. The Metro said, now make America great again. The Daily Mail said, Don's gone. Let's go, Joe. The Daily Mirror headline was A Day of History, A Day of Hope. The Times headline, Time for Unity. The Telegraph, End This Uncivil War. The Daily Express, Big Moment for US and Britain. Ready, steady, Joe. And the Financial Times and The Guardian, both had the same headline, democracy has prevailed. Now, I know I haven't told you what it is that Donald said that I agree with, but I will tell you in a minute. When I have a mess to sort out, uh, Jill likes to quote a proverb. You can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Now, I went Googling that proverb and came up with this, a date from the 16th century. The English clergyman, Stephen Gosson, published the romantic story, Ephemerides, in 1579. And it was referring to people who were engaged in a hopeless task. Well, I know that Jill would describe some of the challenges faced by Joe Biden as a sow's ear. The phrase that Trump used was this, he said, this week, we inaugurate a new administration and we need to pray for its success in keeping America safe and prosperous. So it was that phrase of inviting prayer that I thought was 
and always will be sensible. One of the few things that Donald Trump has said that is sensible. Inviting God into a situation that is challenging is wise. And both the readings that we've had today reflect something of that truth. In Genesis, just to set the scene uh, before the, the portion that John read, and I'm pleased John read it because some of those names were pretty unpronounceable. Um, what was happening was there was not enough pasture for the huge flocks of Lot and his uncle Abram. So they had decided to split up and Lot chooses to go east uh, towards a uh, Sodom and his uncle Abram went the other way to Canaan. Now this was before uh, Sodom was destroyed and it was a very lush and green place and it looked as though uh, the pasture there was so much better. However, that turned to be, turned out to be quite a mistake. It turned out to be a bit of a sow's ear because although it was fertile and rich, it was also a target for marauding kings from neighbouring parts. And that's exactly what had happened. Lot, his family and possessions were taken. They were taken by invaders. And when Abram got, uh, got, got wind of this, he got an army together and he went and rescued Lot and his goods and his people. And the king of Sodom uh, was thankful for that. And they came together with Abram and Lot and together they blessed God for the victory and a good relationship was built up uh, between those people. So it turned out uh, well in the end. And it seems to me that when God is brought into a situation, a silk purse can indeed be made from a sow's ear. And then the gospel reading uh, that Jill read for us, uh, which I hope will crop up quite a lot uh, throughout 2021 as we enter the wedding season because it's a reading that forms part of the marriage service. The weddings that were all uh, due to take place in 2020 in this parish and they were postponed hopefully hopefully they'll be able to take place this year. And I like weddings. I like it when things go smoothly and I also enjoy those little slip-ups that can happen from time to time, the things that make weddings memorable. I can remember uh, three brides from a previous parish who couldn't have their perfect church wedding because just before these weddings were due to take place, uh, the ancient and beautiful lich gate collapsed uh, just before those three weddings. So not only was the lich gate not there for the iconic photograph, but it meant that the access to the church was blocked and had become a building site. And it was eight months later when the lich gate was eventually rebuilt to a stage when it could be used again, that two of the brides came back in all the finery to have the photograph taken in that lovely setting. The third, by that point, was heavily pregnant uh, and so couldn't fit into the wedding dress. I can also remember a former curate of mine conducting a very first wedding only to find that the groom's ring had been mistakenly placed onto the right hand and it had become stuck. Of course, your right hand is slightly bigger than your left if you're right-handed and this uh, this uh, mistake was spotted by my curate and they were trying to take it off uh, during the ceremony without anyone saying, well, they could not get it off. And even in the, in the vestry, when they were signing the registers, uh, a man who works for the local funeral director was brought in to see if he could remove the ring with a technique they use uh, on dead bodies. It didn't work. And so the result was that before they could go off to the wedding breakfast, to the reception, they had to call in at A and E uh, because uh, this man's finger was turning blue and becoming very cold. I also remember uh, my training incumbent who told the story of the couple who had asked the vicar to preach on the text 1 John 4, 18. 
Now, that text was mentioned this morning in the service on Radio 4 as I travelled up to Alnham uh, in the frost. And the text is this, 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. However, somehow in the communication, uh, the verses got changed slightly. And instead of 1 John 4, 18, he looked to prepare the sermon on John 4, 18, uh, the gospel rather than the letter. And uh, that uh, verse says this, for thou hast five husbands and him who, th who, who thou now hast is not thy husband. Now, to pull that off would have been making a silk purse from a sow's ear. God's inter intervention saved the day at Cana 2,000 years ago. And you know what? He still saves the day today. It was one of the recent, recent briefings from 10 Downing Street. I think it was the chief medical officer who said, it is a miracle that we have the COVID vaccine so soon and so many of them. Today's gospel passage records Jesus's first miracle. This miracle of changing water into wine is one of the few non-healing miracles that Jesus performed. Apart from being a happy social occasion and an opportunity to meet lots of people, why should a wedding be so important? And why should Jesus use his divine power in the rather unnecessary act of changing water into wine? After all, wine is hardly an essential to life. In fact, if it's abused, it can be damaging to life, especially to anyone who consumes 180 gallons of it. I think this shows us something uh, about enjoyment and fun being important ingredients of life. Perhaps Jesus is showing by the very first act of his ministry that life can't be separated into secular and sacred, but life rather is a jumbled up whole in which our God of love delights. So at that wedding, which would probably go on for best part of a week. Eating and drinking and making merry would, would be a, a central part of it. And it would be likely that some people at the wedding may even become drunk. In fact, the steward says, normally this fine wine uh, is consumed first and the poorer wine brought out once people have become drunk. Yet what's interesting is that there is no word of warning or blame no condemnation or recrimination on Jesus's lips. In fact, on the contrary, he's extremely concerned that people should have a really good time and goes out of his way to ensure that it happens. The wine produced by Jesus was of a quality never before experienced. Jesus poured out top quality wine just as freely as he poured out his life on the cross for human beings for every one of us. And this superior wine was served to everyone, not just reserved for the VIPs. There will be times during our life, as we journey on, that we are faced with a pig's ear. It's interesting that at the wedding, the presence of Jesus didn't stop the wine running out. It didn't stop things going wrong. But when it did, he intervened. And I think a message for us this morning is that if we allow him, God, he will take the water of our lives and transform them with his rich generosity, often in an unexpected but always gracious manner. So let us all pray for America, pray for the country and its relationships with other nations. Let us continue to pray for all who seek to administer the vaccine and end the pandemic. Let us pray for those who are planning and preparing to marry. But let us also thank God that he does time and time again make a silk purse from a sow's ear. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, Rosie, would you be good enough to lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, hear our prayer as we bring before you these our intercessions. We pray for our world, our church and our community, for each other and for ourselves. We pray for our world leaders in this time of change and in this time of pandemic and the uncertainties that this brings that they seek to understand each other and the situations in their respective countries. We pray that they will work together for the common good, especially in the delivery of vaccines. Give all our leaders the strength they need for firm leadership and warm hearts so that their guidance may be both wise and comforting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those around the world who live and work in places that are difficult and dangerous, where there is conflict, where injustice and brutality are rife, where there is extreme poverty, where climate events cause hardship and misery. Give them and us all the honesty and courage to fight for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our bishops, our archdeacons, our clergy and lay ministers and other leaders of the Christian church. Strengthen and comfort them as they seek to meet the extra demands placed upon them. Give them the continuing faith to model the life of Christ so that all may see and take succour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray for Christians around the world knowing that we have all in our different ways heard the call of Christ. Help us to remember that unity and to seek reconciliation where it is needed. Give us the faith to abide in Christ and bear much fruit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And we pray for the congregations here in Upper Coquit Dale, that although we cannot meet together for the services of worship that we're used to, <coughs> through different ways of using our buildings and different ways of worshipping together, we ask that we may develop a rich union in Christ. 
give us the vision, the vision to grow our church as Christians together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our community, that we may continue to look out for each other and support one another. We pray for all those whose work is more difficult at this time, our teachers, our healthcare workers, the police, those in the hospitality industry. Give us all the ability to see and recognize the signs and miracles of your reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are weighed down with sorrow and who feel that God is far from them. For those who are struggling anew with the restrictions through this winter. We think of those whom we know and name them in our hearts. Bind up the injured, strengthen the sick and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. And we think of and name in our hearts those who are poorly, those we know in this parish and family and friends. And we remember Mark Tosinski, Bill Hopkinson, Jack Tully and Neil Telfer. And we pray for their family and friends. May all those who are bereaved be aware of your presence alongside them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with us and all who follow you in the way. We pray that we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We draw our prayers together in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our oh, Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is Charles Wesley's Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
And now may he who changed water into wine pour his love upon you that you may know his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all very much uh, for being with us. Thank you, John, for leading us uh, through that service. Thank you, Ellen and Adrienne, for making it happen. Thank you, Rosie, for your intercessions. Jill, for reading the gospel. John, for that first reading. It's been great having all of you with us. So next week, it is uh, Churches Together. And it'll be here. I'll put the link. I'll send the link out, and it'll also be on the website.